Hi, I'm the Collection Manager for the Archaeology Department at the Auckland Museum, Tamaki Pahinga Hira, and I'm going to talk to you about coprolites and paleofeces. Archaeologists study past ways of life. They study everything they find to work out ancient lifestyles or environments, from very large buildings to very tiny seeds and pollens, from great works of art to discarded broken stone flakes. One of the most informative things that they study is human waste. Yes, feces or poo or scat or whatever you'd like to call it. Luckily, by the time archaeologists get to deal with it, most of the samples are old enough to have lost their distinctive smell and they look and feel like clumps of dried mud or stones. Waste has different names depending on how old it is and what form it's in. The more recent old poo, which has been hardened and dried, is called paleofeces. Paleo means old and feces is poo, so literally old poo. Paleofeces are usually found in sheltered sites and can be quite tricky to identify and collect as they are often fragile and crumbly. Very ancient waste is called coprolites. These have been fossilized, which means turned into stone by high pressure and chemical changes. They are very tough and long lasting, literally a stone, and sometimes can be quite beautiful. They are even used for jewelry. The word coprolite is sometimes used by archaeologists for paleofeces as well. Studying coprolites and where they are found can tell us about how people arrange their living areas and their ways of dealing with waste material. This was quite a problem as villages got larger if there were no sewage systems. Ancient settlements would have smelled very different to modern ones. Waste material can tell us some of the diseases or parasites suffered by these communities, in much the same way that scientists now test our wastewater treatment plants for signs of COVID. These bacteria or parasites found can tell us who the community was in contact with, either by trade or travel. The most common information we get from coprolites is about what people were eating. The types of food eaten shows what the people hunted or farmed or traded for, and this can tell us about the environment and the climate they lived in. Luckily, the human stomach does not destroy everything that passes through it. So when examining coprolites, we can see, or use a microscope to see, and identify small pieces of bone or fish scale or seeds or undigested bits of plant. Sometimes the remains show us how they prepared their food. For instance, cooked and raw bone looks very different through a microscope, and processed grains can show us if they were milled or ground, and chemical tests can tell us about fermentation processes like brewing beer or fermenting cheese. This is an example of a 2,700 year old paleofeces from the Hulstedt salt mine in Austria. Beans and millet and barley are visible and chemical tests have found traces of fermented beer and cheese. These days, it is also possible to do DNA tests to identify the kinds of animals and plants that have been eaten, but which leave no visible traces. DNA also helps us to identify the people themselves and to tell between different groups of people or different species of early man, like Neanderthals. Talking of no visible traces, even when there are no visible paleofeces, it is possible to test soil from old cities or villages and find chemicals which can tell us that human waste was deposited there. Studying paleofeces and coprolites, however, does have problems. They often rot away quickly or are not found. They are sometimes hard to identify and are overlooked. It is very hard to get an accurate result when trying to ask how much or how many how many people lived in this area? How much meat were they eating altogether? 
And of course, there are going to be very different results whether you test one coprolite, the result of one meal from one individual, or a soil sample from a common toilet area where the results will show what many people ate over a period of time. In larger towns or cities, you'll also find a difference between different areas. For example, palace waste is different to the waste from the streets where tradespeople lived and worked. So we have seen how useful coprolites are to archaeologists. Now let's meet a few of the interesting characters themselves. One of the oldest human coprolites is from Neanderthal feces from El Salt in Spain. It's about 50,000 years old and the scientists were able to do DNA tests to identify the species that produced it. They're very, very small coprolites and were very difficult to find. Measuring millimetres deposited in the sediment you see in the slide. From very small to very big, the Lloyds Bank coprolite is possibly the largest and most famous human paleofeces found by archaeologists. It was discovered in 1972 in the Viking settlement of Jorvik, now York, in England. It measures 20 centimetres long and 5 centimetres wide. Tests show that the producer ate mostly meat and bread and had intestinal worms. And so, as early as the 1930s, it was suggested that coprolites might be useful to archaeologists. By the 1960s, more serious work was done on identifying plant fragments. And now that scientists have the very powerful DNA and other chemical testing methods, this aspect of archaeology is really proving very useful. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this.